I am Marie Contreras. I like to talk about saving money, making money, budgeting, and aging gracefully and living the life of your dreams. Being free, basically. Doing what you want when you want, how you want. Being able to have that freedom involves being healthy enough to have the freedom, having the money to have the freedom, and to keep your options and choices open. That's what I want to talk about today. One of the basics for having options and freedom is your money. A lot of my friends, I was surprised to learn last year, have never had a budget don't know where to start with the budget and are completely overwhelmed by it. So this video is for them. I have been a lifelong budgeter. I haven't always succeeded executing my plan, but I am a planner by nature. That's just who I am. I'm a planner. I am definitely a work in progress. And if you're a work in progress and you wanna know where to start on even creating a budget, this video is for you. First off, do you use a an app? or do you just use pen and paper? That's up to you. I used an app for years and years and years. I loved the Mint app, but they did away with it last year. December 31st was the end of Mint. They transferred everything over to Credit Karma, and when I say everything, they didn't transfer everything. That's what they said. They were transferring everything over to Credit Karma. So at the end of the year, I got a pop-up on the Mint app and it said, if you want to, we are migrating everything over to Credit Karma and if you'd like to migrate there, go ahead. So I did. And I migrated everything over to Credit Karma and then I went to Credit Karma to find my budgeting app and they had net worth on there and they had the balances in my accounts but they really didn't have any budgeting software over there. They basically are just now tracking your net worth and your credit. And I was already a Credit Karma user. I tracked my credit score there, but I really didn't want to give them all of that additional information on my banking without getting the budgeting portion of it in return, which I was no longer getting. So I deleted all of my account data from that app. Now, do I believe that it's gone forever? Probably not. I did give them access, they had it, but I don't want them to have it going forward. So I deleted all of my banking information because quite frankly, I don't think they there's any reason for them to have it other than to sell my information to creditors. And that's primarily what Credit Karma does anyway. So I just, I opted to keep more of my information private because there was really no budgeting to speak of on the, on the uh, Credit Karma app. I looked at Rocket Money, I looked at you need a budget that I thought about it and I thought you know I've been simplifying my budget over the last year as I've been paying down accounts if you have way too many credit accounts way too many payments then a budgeting app budgeting app software may still be of benefit to you but I found that when I wrote everything down on paper and I was doing a weekly zero based budget it was easier I was making it easier and because so many of my friends said that budgeting is too complicated and it's too overwhelming I thought today I would show you how simple and truly easy it can be to to stay on a budget I do believe that it's good to have a monthly idea of what everything everything that you're going to spend and so I do still have a monthly budget. You can do this on a single sheet of paper. You can do this in a budgeting journal. This one is a Clever Fox budgeting journal. And I got this on Amazon. It was not expensive. This one is a 12 month journal and it's got spaces for you to set your goals. This is, this is the one I got, the Clever Fo Fox budgeting pro. And I like it because it opens flat you can do uh, yearly goals in it. You know, it's got a spot for finance goals. It's got a spot for your monthly budget, your income and your outgoes. And then I also do a weekly budget because I pay myself weekly. I'm self-employed. All of my income is coming from me and my businesses. And so I pay myself on average $1,000 a week. And I write it out on a sheet of paper. I created a weekly budgeting template on Canva, but you don't even need to do that. You can just do it on a single sheet of paper. I'm going to show you how I set that up. Now, first, I have a couple different categories. And because I have a cash budgeting system, I have envelopes. This binder is the binder that I that I pay my bills in. What I have done is I have gotten two months ahead. I was doing one of those 100 envelope challenges and I was already one month ahead, which means the money that I'm putting in here was for not for the current month that we're in, but it was for the next month. In here, I've got things like an envelope for my mortgage, an envelope for HOA dues, 
an envelope for subscriptions and utilities, car insurance, home insurance, things like that. So everything, all the things that are fixed that are exactly the same month in and month out, I have categorized in envelopes in here. My envelopes look like this and it's really easy to see where I'm at. I can tell when this one is almost full. I think all I'm missing is the big ones. I've got more of the mortgage money I need to put in and my HOA money. But everything else for the month is already filled. And and one of the reasons that I was able to do that is I've reduced all of my, my bills quite a bit. So my monthly overhead on fixed expenses is relatively low for someone living in Los Angeles. Another binder that I fill each week is my debt binder. I do have credit card debt. This is kind of the same system. I've got the credit cards and I've got the minimum monthly payments in here as well as any extra that I can put towards a credit card. And then at the end of the month, I, I empty this and I put it in my, I put the cash from here in my checking account to cover the next month. The money that's going to pay my minimum payments on my fixed expenses and my credit cards and my debts. I'm making this video in January. The, the money to cover my bills in January is already in my checking account. These binders are covering the next month. And then I've also got a different binder that I cover sinking funds. And if you don't know what a sinking fund is, a sinking fund is a savings account. And these are not, these are just envelopes. These are basically envelopes for different things that come up, not every month, but they come up on a regular basis and I know they're coming. This would be things like your car registration, your property taxes, your income taxes. If you're self-employed like I am, I have emergency money in here. I've got medical co-pays, things like birthdays, Christmas, vacations, car maintenance, vet bills, self-care. That one hasn't gotten anything in a long time. Home, home improvement projects, home repairs, renovations. Any of those things that you want to do, but you don't necessarily pay for them every month, but you know they're coming and, and you want to get them done, that's a sinking fund. So you set aside money each each week or each month or however often you can, and you, you take care of those things so that when they come up, you don't have to figure out well, where am I, how am I going to pay for this? And you don't have to go reach for a credit card and pay for these things that don't happen very often. You can do things like your insurance, you can have money set aside for insurance deductibles. Basically anything that could come at you, you, you put a sinking fund. You're probably thinking, well, how can I even think of all these things? Well, the first month you may not think of all these things. As they come up, you add them to your list. I have a running list in the front of each of these binders. I've got one for all the things that I want a sinking fund for. I've got one for all my current credit cards with their uh, minimum payments as well as the balance due. And then I've got one for all my fixed expenses. Now this year, my HOA fees went up almost $100. So I changed what I was saving for the HOA. So this is not set in stone. So as things change, you adjust. It makes it easier to adjust when you have a little bit of a cushion. My checking account only pays my bills. I don't pay for anything else out of my checking account. If I wanna go buy clothes or if I wanna buy groceries or gas or any of those little runaround things, I pay for those out of the cash in my wallet. And I've made a different video on my variable expenses and cash stuffing my variable expenses. And I'm gonna link that at the end so you can see how I do that because I don't have my wallet handy right now. If I wanna do shopping or if I wanna buy something for my house, it doesn't come out of my checking account. My checking account only pays my bills, my debts, and the things that I'm saving for in my sinking funds. And the way that I pay for those things is I save for them, for them in these binders. And then at the end of the month, I empty the binders and I deposit that money into the account. Now, I got two months ahead. This is January right now when I'm filming this as an example. The money for all my January bills is already in my checking account. So I'm the money that's going in here would technically be for February. However, what I did was every time I got an extra dollar, I got a couple windfalls last, last month. I got some Christmas bonus money. I got a tax refund on my property taxes. All that extra money, I filled these binders up, these binders up 
as quickly as I could. And I filled them before the end of the month. So when I filled them, I emptied them. And then I also was doing a 100 envelope savings challenge. You're not gonna see me unstuffing the 100 envelope savings challenge because I got impatient, I've got a major surgery coming up and I wanted to get as far ahead on my months as possible. I wanted to get three months of expenses saved up and I was able to do it. So what I did was when I filled up my bills and my debt binders, I emptied those and I put them in this pouch this is enough to cover one month of expenses. So I've got, and I need to deposit this and I need to take this and, and put it in the bank. But I've already got the money for this month in the bank. I've got the money set aside for another month, could be next month. And then these binders are almost full for the next month. This month, next month, and the following month are just about covered. I've got, I still have to, to stuff the money for the mortgage and the HOA in the fixed bills, but I've got the money set aside. I think I've got everything set aside for credit cards. No, I still have a little bit left. I think I've got 75 I need, and I've got about $300 left that I need to, to make minimum payments on my credit cards for a month, HOA and mortgage. But everything else is covered. So I've got this month, next month, and almost a third month here. The way that I did that was I started just pouring everything that I could into these extra months. Now, the last couple of weeks have been really slow. And normally when I was living paycheck to paycheck, that would be a major problem because I've got bills that are coming due. But because I've already got the money in the account for this month, the slow months do still make me nervous because if I have too many of them, it's going to affect me at, you know, it'll catch up to me at some point, but it doesn't catch up to me as quickly now because I've got this month covered, next month covered, and the following month almost covered. So I've got time. Before I didn't have time, I had to scramble. The peace that comes with knowing that I'm covered for almost three months is amazing, especially with uh, a brain surgery coming up. I will probably be out of, I will be out of work for at least one month. I could be out of work for long, who knows how much longer. It could be two months, it could be three months, it could be six months. There's just, there's no way of knowing until it happens. I am planning on recovering as quickly as possible. I'm healthy. There's no reason for me to have complications that I can see, so I'm not gonna worry about, I'm not gonna worry about things that are completely out of my control. But what I am gonna do is continue to save, continue to be mindful with my money. My house is, I've pretty much gotten done all of my little honeydews around the house and I'm just gonna keep going. The easiest way to do your budget is to get a sheet of paper. Just a blank sheet of paper. You can use a blank journal that has lines in it, doesn't matter. Write out your income and your expenses. I would do it in these categories. The first cat, once you figure out what your income is, and you can do this every time you get paid, you can do this once a week, once every two weeks, once a month, whatever works for you. But you need to know what your bills are. So the first category that you're gonna pay is going to be the things you have to, your home, your utilities, things like that. This is the must do's. The must do's that you know are coming or every month. Write those out next. So those are your fixed expenses. The next category that I'm gonna pay personally is I wanna keep my credit good, so I'm gonna pay my credit. Right now, we're just doing minimum payments. So you've got your fixed expenses in one column and you've got your credit card debts. The next thing is your variable expenses. These are things like the things that you're gonna go around town and take care of your errands, groceries. I'm stocked up on food. So I don't have three months of money set aside for food and gas because I probably got three months of food in already prepared in my freezer. I've been making meals ahead of time to get ready for my surgery. I've also been buying prepackaged meals when they went on sale. So I'm good on food. I'm also not setting aside money for gas because I'm not going anywhere. I fill my tank every Friday. When I'm not preparing for a surgery, then I would have food in my wallet each week. I would, I would put the amount that I have budgeted for food the amount that I've budgeted for gas. And the thing with that is, if you see that you're spending more than what your budget is and you're stealing it from other places, then the you fine tune it. Every week, 
you see what's left in your wallet and you're going to know very quickly what you really need. If you're, if you're one of those people that says, I'm going to spend $100 a month on groceries, and then you see stuff on sale or you want to do a drive through just be realistic with it. You know, if you can't do $25 a week and you're consistently spending 50 or 100 then that's what you need to change your budget to. It needs to be realistic because if it's not realistic, you're going to throw it out the window and just say, I can't do it. So be realistic with this, especially in the beginning. If you're spending... If you look through your bank account and you see all your debit transactions and you see that you're spending three or $400 a month on groceries, then don't try to go to $100 a month on groceries on the first pass. You know, reduce it in stages. You know, maybe do 20% less or 30% less or cut out the drive-throughs or cut out half the drive-throughs instead of going every day for lunch. You know, pack your lunch three days a week and let yourself go out twice a, a week. The idea with a budget is not to, to restrict yourself and to torture yourself. It's not supposed to be torture. These are your resources to do with whatever you want. And if you want to eat out and that brings you joy, plan for it. You know, you can have an envelope for dining out. Just plan for it. If you're going out to restaurants every night with your spouse or your boyfriend or your girlfriend because you didn't go to the grocery store, you don't even like the food, then you're wasting your money. If you're going out for the experience and to give somebody a break and you really enjoy it, that's a completely different thing and you can plan for that. So whatever your variable expenses are, you can plan for them. And then the final category that you should have on your budget is your savings goals. This can be things like if you're saving for a down payment on a house, if you need an emergency fund, and before you, you pay extra on your credit cards, you need to have three to six months of emergency money set aside. I made another video about how ludicrous being set with only a thousand dollars is. There's a, there is a very famous budget guy online who says, you know, save a thousand dollars before you do anything. And, th and that's not bad advice. A thousand dollars is something you should have in your, in your account. It's just not enough. I'm facing a brain surgery. I'm going to be out of work for one to three months at least. A thousand dollars won't even, it'll get me through one week. If you're self-employed, especially, you've got to have reserves. If you have a job that's going to pay you short-term disability, that's different. You know, if you've got all the insurance and you've got a spouse and you've got a safety net other than cash, wonderful. I don't have that. I'm single. I am a divorced woman, self-employed, and $1,000 would not be nearly enough for me. So for me, three months is my bare minimum. I'm going to work towards six months. Six months to a year would make would give me much more peace of mind. You know, I, I'm not going to park it in my checking account. I'm going to put it in a high yield savings account where it's liquid and available for all the things that life throws at you. Life is going to throw something at all of us. It's just a matter of what it's going to be and when it's going to be. That's basically what you need to do on a budget. So what I do each week is I transfer $1,000. That's what I'm paying myself. I transfer $1,000 from my business checking to my personal checking. Each week I will, t I will withdraw that $1,000 because I'm already ahead. I've already got this month's money set aside and I've got next month's money ready to ready to transfer into that account. So what I do each week is I will go to the bank once a week and I will withdraw the $1,000. I will take 500 of that and I will put it in the binder for my bills. So $500 a week will go in here. 250 a week will go into my credit and my loan account. $100 will go into my wallet and then another 150 minimum is gonna go into savings. The weeks that I can save more are weeks that I made more. But on average, I'm going to make $1,000 a week. And so that's what I pay myself. If I have a week that is less, I have a week that's less. I am currently almost three months ahead. So if I do have a week that's less, I have time to make it up the next week or the, the following week. If I have too many weeks that are less in a row, I need to revisit my budget. I also need to revisit what I'm paying myself each week. If I don't have the clients to support the $1,000 a week, then I just have to change my budget. And I'm self-employed, so that can happen. I've had two weeks in a row that were less than 1000 but now I've just booked a big pet sitting job, and so next week is going to be more than 1000 So it does average out. And because I'm 
to almost three months ahead, I have time to let it average out. Now, if I have a week where I can pay myself more, then it generally goes more towards savings. Or I might treat myself. I might give myself a little bit of self-care money or shopping money, but it's planned. There's a plan for it. Before I spend anything, before I go to Amazon and buy anything online, before I go window shopping or to Home Goods or TJ Maxx, I know exactly how much I can spend. And I haven't gone to any of those stores in months and months and months because it hasn't been part of my plan. I shop once a week on Fridays on, on after I get paid and I've gone to the bank and gotten my cash. I fill up my tank once a week. I don't drive so much that I need to fill it up more than once a week. All of my customers, I, I keep close. I have a tight service area because I don't want to spend a lot on gas. It's it's not worth it. I don't charge enough for my, my pet visits to be driving real far. I use one tank of gas every... I don't even use a full tank of gas. I usually use a half a tank of gas, sometimes a quarter tank of gas because my customers are all very close to each other. But I fill up on Fridays. I wash my car on Fridays. I get my groceries on Fridays. If I have any other errands, I do that on Fridays. I do all of my errands together. That also saves on gas and driving. My car doesn't have a lot of miles on it. It's been paid off since 2017. Haven't had a car payment since 2017. Don't need one. I've got a Toyota. It's a good car. I'll buy another Toyota when it's when it's time. I set aside money for maintenance. I have routines, but that's what I do with my budget. I'm feeling so much more peaceful about it as I've gotten farther ahead. When I first got diagnosed with this brain tumor, I was one month ahead. I was in a panic because I thought, well, what am I going to do if I can't work for two? You know, one month ahead wasn't enough. So I worked really hard. I took every job that came my way. I was grateful for every job that came my way. I was happy to do it. I love what I do. So working extra was not a hardship for me at all. I really truly love what I do. So I just leaned in. I leaned in, I tightened the belt. I, I didn't go crazy at the grocery store. I didn't go crazy for Christmas. I had a very simple Christmas. I haven't been buying home things. I haven't been starting any new major home improvements, which I would normally love to do, but I'm just, you know, just kind of coasting and saving. I'm in saving mode. It's funny, I saw all these videos come up about no spend Januaries, and I've had a no spend October, November, December already. And a January is a piece of cake for me. You can do a, a, an entire budget on a single sheet of paper. You can use Google Docs. You can use an app. It doesn't really matter how you do it. Just you've got to know what you're what your money is, where your money is coming from and where it's going out. I know when I don't track a budget and I don't keep track, I just, you know, you can fritter it away on, on things that, that you're going to end up decluttering and taking to a thrift store or giving away. Just hold off on stuff like that and get your money right because there's so much peace that comes with money in the bank. It's just, it's a game changer. I hope this helps somebody. That's, that's why I make these videos and I hope you have a great day. I'll see you next time.